Killer Queens A few Anglo-Saxon queens really did live up to the name. Kinthrith was queen consort to the Anglo-Saxon King Arthur of Mercia, who ruled that large English kingdom from 757 to 796. There is very little in recorded history about her, but from what evidence we have, she was highly influential in the administration of her husband's kingdom and like many royal mothers, she worked diligently to further the interests of her children. Offa wanted to guarantee the future of his dynasty and designated Kinthrith as his queen and raised her in importance in the kingdom. Kinthrith's name first appears in her husband's charters after the birth of her son, Egfrith, in 770. She was a frequent witness to the charters and appears as queen of the Mercians in some of them. Most significantly, there were coins struck in her name and this political and ecclesiastical maneuvering by the couple was done to position themselves above their rivals. The records indicate that Kinthrith gave birth to one son and at least four daughters. Most notoriously, one daughter, Edba, would marry King Bortric of Wessex and earn a reputation for being an evil queen, like her mother. Some later chroniclers, such as Roger of Wendover, have alleged that Kinthrith was either personally responsible for the assassination of Ethelbert, king of East Anglia, or to have incited offer to kill him. There is a terse entry in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle which tells us that Ethelbert was murdered during a visit to Sutton Walls, Herefordshire, on the orders of King Offa in 794. But in another account of the murder written in either the late 12th century or mid-13th century in the literary history called The Lives of the Two Offers, Kinthrith is blamed for the crime. The writer was a cleric of the monastery of St. Albans which had been founded by Offa. In this account, Kinthrith is the evil counsellor of the king and poisons his mind against King Ethelbert who was a suitor to their daughter. Offa refused to murder Ethelbert so Kinthrith did the deed herself. The story goes that when he visited, she had a pit dug in the bedchamber and perched a chair above it. Ethelbert was lured into the chamber by the promise of viewing his future bride. When he sat in the chair he fell into the pit and the queen's servants suffocated him with cushions and hangings. Another version of this story has Ethelbert beheaded. The motive for the murder is not given and the reasons why Ethelbert became a sainted martyr and the subject of a cult are unclear. Offa died of natural causes in July of 796. His only son, Egfrith, succeeded him but died just months later, most likely of natural causes. Despite all of Offa's conspicuous efforts to perpetuate his family's legacy, the death of his son ended his dynasty. Edba was the daughter of King Offa of Mercia and his queen, Kinthith, both previously mentioned. We know much about her from King Alfred the Great's biographer, although bias is likely as it was his grandfather, King Egbert of Wessex, that was chased into exile by King Bortric of Wessex and his ally, Offa, Edba's own father. She was married to King Bortric of Wessex in 789 and quickly came to manipulate him against his own advisers, whom she hated and feared, and she worked ceaselessly to blunt in Wessex's rivalry to her father's Mercian power base and ambitions. She was called a tyrant. If she couldn't get her way through the king, she resorted to poisoning the food or drink of the councillors and others she hated. Eventually there was a young man who became a favorite of Bortric, but Edber denounced him even though Bortric wouldn't give in to her. She decided to poison the young man, but Bortric took the poison by mistake. Both the king and the young man died at Wareham in 802. The death of her husband forced Edber's life to take a completely different turn. Egbert the grandfather of Alfred the Great, was recalled from exile at Charlemagne's court and elected King of Wessex, so Edber was unable to stay. 
Her father and brother had died in 796 so she was unable to return to Mercia. Alfred's biographer, Arthur, says she packed up countless treasures and fled to Francia and the court of Charlemagne, who gave her a large convent of nuns over which she would rule as abbess. Unfortunately, just as she had lived recklessly in England, she did so in Francia. Edber was caught in an act of debauchery with an Anglo-Saxon man and ejected from the convent on the orders of Charlemagne. She would live a life of poverty and misery until her death. She was seen at the end of her days, wandering the streets of Pavia in northern Italy with a single slave boy, begging. Alfrith was the wife of her second husband, King Edgar of England who reigned from 959 to 975. She had two sons with Edgar, the Atheling Edward, and Ethelred, later known to history as, the Unready. When Edgar died, Edward was almost an adult, but was described as being unstable, or tempestuous. His successful claim for the throne was supported by many key figures including both Archbishops Dunstan and Oswald and the brother of Alfritha's first husband, Ethelwyn, Eldorman of East Anglia. Supporting the unsuccessful claim of Ethelred were Alfrith herself, now the Queen Dowager, Bishop Athelwad of Winchester, and Elfhir, Eldorman of Mercia. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, the young King Edward, later called the Martyr, was deceived and murdered whilst being welcomed at Corfe Castle on the 18th of March 978 visiting his stepmother. Alfrith her servant stabbed him as he tried to dismount his horse which bolted and dragged him to his doom, finally leaving the way clear for her son Ethelred to be king. As the king developed into a cult figure and martyr, a myths and legends grew up around his murder, at first implying Alfritha's guilt and later accusing her outright. The 12th century monastic chronicle the Liber Eliensis went so far as to accuse her of being a witch, claiming that she had murdered not only the king, but also Abbot Britnoth of Ely. Due to Ethelred's youth, Alfrith served as regent for her son until his coming of age about 984. She and her regency council ruled quietly, efficiently, and with an iron fist. Although she appeared as a stereotypical bad queen and evil stepmother in many medieval histories, she was in fact very religious and founded at least one nunnery. Maybe her cold ambition was routine for the time. Alflad, was a daughter of Oswig, king of Bernese in Northumbria. She married Pedder, the son of her father's rival King Penda of southern Northumbria. The sequence of events begins with Oswig's destruction of Penda at the Battle of Winwed in 655. Oswig took over and placed the northern part under his direct control. He gave the southern part to Pedder, king of the Middle Angles, as a gift of friendship. Although he was Penda's son, Pedda seems to have sided with his father-in-law at Winwed and was richly rewarded for this allegiance. The great enlargement of his kingdom meant that his Bernician wife Allflad was now queen of a large chunk of eastern England. She and Pedda could look forward to substantial increases in wealth and status. However, in spite of this major upturn in their fortunes, something went badly wrong in their marriage. In the spring of 656, during the Easter weekend, Pedda was assassinated. The finger of blame was pointed at Alflad. Why did she turn against her husband? Did her father and brother sanction the murder? Alflad's ambitious brother Alfrith had been Pedda's friend and religious confidant only three years earlier, while Oswig had recently given Pedda a huge tract of territory. Did they begin to feel that he had outlived his usefulness? Or did all Flad act alone, pursuing her own ambitions with the help of Mercian or Middle Anglian supporters? Her fate after Pedder's death is unknown. 
It is unlikely that she retained her queenship of the Middle Angles, even if a faction among their nobility had helped her to get rid of Pedda. It is possible that she was in cahoots with, or having an affair with, a high-ranking nobleman who wanted the Middle Anglian kingship for himself. We can assume, nonetheless, that her dead husband's friends posed a real threat to her safety while she remained in the Midlands. According to the Venerable Bede, Pedder was very wickedly killed through his wife's treachery during the very time of celebrating Easter in 656. We are not told why, or whether she was punished. E. Anglo-Saxon Chronicle adds Pedder ruled no length of time, because he was betrayed by his own queen at Eastertide. Nothing more was heard of Alflad, nor is she listed in the Durham Liber Vitae where we might have expected her name to appear if she later became an abbess in Northumbria. Perhaps she perished at the hands of Pedder's vengeful and loyal henchmen. If this was her fate, she was barely in her early twenties when she died. <laughs>